All right. Well, good morning. Um, the goal of this Zoom session is really just to explain the or the group assignment, which becomes a little confusing for some students because they don't know really where to go to connect with their group and all that. So what I'm going to do is just explain the assignment and show you how to connect with your group. And um, I know that some students don't like group projects. <laughs> And I understand because mostly because the other students don't get back to them when they're reaching out to them or don't communicate well. And so it makes it a little bit frustrating. So just do your best in trying to connect with your group. I'll have a deadline date where if you don't hear back from them, they're on their own to do the project. Um, but uh, that's kind of how I do it. So I usually give you a couple of weeks to try and connect and and to develop, you know, some kind of a strategy for the assignment. And if you don't connect for some reason or only connect with one person, then the two of you will do the assignment and the third person will be on their own. And I've found in most cases when that third person's on their own, they don't, they just don't do the assignment. So uh, anyway, so that's kind of the, 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 the idea here. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and uh, I'll give you guys a chance to ask any questions later on, or if you have any questions while I'm talking, please let me know. And I will uh, stop to answer those questions. So <clears throat> here we are in uh, the class. If you, can you guys see my screen right now? See that I'm in um, Canvas? Yeah, I can see it. Okay. So I'm going to scroll down to the assignment, which is the final group assignment, um, I think. Let's see, uh, start final group assignment, which is this week. But here's the good news is you, you have uh, next week's break for Thanksgiving. And then the following week, of course, is the first week in, into December. So you have kind of a couple of weeks to get started. So I figured over the next couple of weeks, you know, this week and maybe even during Thanksgiving week, you can try and reach out to your group uh, members. But basically, if I select that assignment, um, this, this, of course, explains the assignment. And what it is, is you're going to be doing an unsolicited proposal. And uh, the scenario is right here uh, under unsolicited proposal. Your boss, the national sales manager, insists that all company sales reps continue to carry full-size laptop computers for making presentations to clients and to manage files and communication tasks. In addition to your laptops, you and your colleagues have to carry bulky printed catalog and variety of product samples up and down stairs, on and off airplanes, in and out of your cars. You're desperate to lighten the load and you come up with the idea that switching from laptops to tablets would help the sales team. So you jot down a few of the following thoughts and questions, and those are listed here uh, that you'll want to answer in your proposal. And, uh, and then, of course, your task is to research these questions. So you're going to basically do a little bit of research as a group on kind of the the weight, the size, the struggles of, uh, yeah, go ahead, Bobby. What's your question? You're in um, Cerritos. I only see the Cerritos College, like Canvas. And I know, like, I don't see what you're reading. Okay. Like, we, thank I, you. Yeah, for, I see the module. Thank you for telling me that. Um, am I in Cerritos College? Oh, I am. Yeah. It's the same assignment, but let me go back. <laughs> Maybe it is different. Hold on. I don't know. I didn't know I had that open. This says Norco College here. So how about... Oh, yeah, yeah, now I can see that one. Okay. I don't know why you're seeing Cerritos because this is the same page I was on. But either way, uh, now you can see it. So the unsolicited proposal is basically... You're, you're basically going to send a proposal to your boss uh, that you want to switch from laptops and bulky catalogs to... Um, to tablets. And so you just need to do a little research on like the size, weight, cost of tablets uh, versus laptops. Uh, maybe mention that you could sell the laptops and have money available to buy the uh, the tablets, et cetera. But you're, an unsolicited proposal means that they're not expecting it, right? A solicited proposal means that you've received what's called an R, a request for proposal, RFP, and when you receive an RFP, then you're just answering the request for proposal, what they're asking for. But in this case, because your boss isn't asking for it, you're just soliciting it to him or her, uh, then you need to kind of sell them on it. So it becomes kind of a sales proposal. I'm trying to get convince you to switch from laptops to tablets. And uh, so you need to follow the format of an informal proposal that's in the book. And uh, you'll want to use the AIDA format because you're trying to convince them 
of this. So you again, the AIDA format is an indirect strategy, and uh, we covered that a couple of weeks ago, or actually this last week, uh, on persuasive messages. So uh, you'll want to use that. So again, getting their attention, building their interest, uh, creating desire by removing any resistance they might have, and then of course asking or driving home the action that you want them to take. So in this case, you know, let's let's uh, switch today or let's have a meeting and discuss switching, et cetera, would kind of be how you drive it home at the end. But um, but th that's what it is. So that's going to be your project uh, that you're going to do as a group. And uh, make sure that you follow all these guidelines down the bottom, short paragraphs, you know, all the stuff that we've been learning about what we call design elements to improve readability. So things like headings, bullet lists, bold text, uh, short paragraphs separated by white space, single space paragraphs, all the stuff that business writing is and how it's different from like writing an essay or any other kind of writing. And so utilize all those uh, resources and all those design elements and make sure you follow the AIDA format. You also need to have some headings in there. It should have headings. It's going to be a multiple page document. So it's probably going to be you know, anywhere from two, two or three to five pages. Um, you're going to want to have some kind of a table or graph to show uh, maybe some illustrations of the different tablets that are available. You might also want to um, include a table that shows you the cost breakdown and differences in cost, et cetera. So it's got to have a lot of all the elements of a business report or a business proposal, which would include all those items and a cover page at the beginning that describes uh, what this is and then, you know, the actual document. So you can write it simply as a proposal. You can format it as a memo if you want. Since it is an in-office type communication, uh, you could do it that way. You can also format it as an email if you want, but it's better if you can make it more like a report or a proposal because that way it'd be its own document. Uh, but look in the book when we when you get to chapter, I'm not sure which chapter it is in this class, but it's the next chapter we're looking at uh, this week on proposals. So follow kind of the format of an informal proposal when you do it. And then as far as accessing your group, and that's the big question most students have, is if you notice over here, I have the people uh, function uh, active now. If you select the people function, it'll open up a folder, a page that lists all the people in the class. I don't know if you can see everybody in the class when you select that, but if you look at the top here, there is a final proposal tab. And if you select that final proposal tab, it should show just your group that you're in. Now it shows every group for me because I'm the instructor and I'm also in instructor mode. And if I go to student mode, it won't show anybody because I'm not in anybody's group. So I'm just showing you all of them. So when you get to this page here, it should only show your group, whichever group you're in. So if I was to go through here, uh, let's see, Bobby, if I could find which group you're in real quick, and then I'll find Georgina's too. So there's Georgina. So Georgina's in group three. And then, and by the way, with, you're with Joseph. Joseph's a great guy. And Juan, those are both really uh, good students, so you should be okay. Uh, let's see, where's Bobby at? Since both of you are online, but these are the groups. I'm just, I'm, I'm just d expanding them away. So there you are, Robert, right here. <clears throat> so you're with Riley and Marissa. So anyway, once you get into this page, if you go all the way to the right, you see these three dots to the right over here. If you select that, it says visit group homepage. So if you select that, you actually have your own homepage where you can communicate only with the students in your group. So for instance, here you have a home screen, you have announcements, so you could actually communicate to each other by creating an announcement. And you can just say, hi, everybody, my name's Bobby, or my name's Georgina. I'm looking forward to working on a project together. You have a place where you can type that information. Uh, you also have a um, discussion place, which is probably the better place to go because in discussions, uh, it, again, it's very similar, but you put in your information and then you can share files and everything else in here. You can attach files right here. So if you want to like attach something or just cut and paste it into this box here, you can do that. So the, either way you want to do it, you can use announcements to introduce yourself. You can use discussions to dialogue. Most students I've found in a group project end up sharing their cell phone number. Sometimes they do some kind of a group text thing that they're all on together to communicate about the project. But however you want to do it, this is where you would initially connect and share your files and things. And then when you're done with your assignment, you know, you get it all finished, you all need to upload it as if it were your assignment. And of course, you would do that by going back to the uh, 
the assignment <clears throat> itself in modules. So I'll just scroll down again. And uh, this is going to, this final group assignment is going to slide down every week. I'll move it into the next module. But if you come here in student view, which is the, just the actual assignment, just select the assignment itself. And then up here, start assignment. And then you can upload a file right here. So if you have your finished document, just click upload file, navigate to your computer, wherever the file is, and then you can upload it. And you'll all need to do that. That way I know that everybody in your group participated because if I, I could set it up to where one person submits for everybody, but if I do that and one of the people in your group didn't participate at all, then they automatically get you know a, a submittal and uh, I don't want it to be that way. So you all must submit your own in order for me to give you credit uh, for it. Uh, then of course you would select submit assignment when you do that. So, so that's pretty much it. I mean, it wasn't intended to be a long uh, chat. Oh, excuse me, a long uh, Zoom session. I just wanted to make sure you understood how to get to your group. So again, just select the people button to the left here and then select final proposal at the top tab of that page, the people page, and that'll bring you into your group. So I don't know if you guys want to try that now, if you're able to do that while we're online to see that you're able to see your group. That would be helpful to me if you can try it by going into Canvas. Yeah, and Marissa sent a message that she was checking in um, earlier. Oh, you did? Yeah, I, I, on, in our group, I saw that she was checking in on ours. <clears throat> oh, okay. So, Marissa, in your group, which group were you in again? You were in eight. eight. Okay, let me see, Bob. Yeah, so Marissa, she's already sent a message to you guys in there? Yeah, she's, they're saying that she was just checking in, not sure if this is the way to do it. Yeah. Well, she was right. It is. <laughs> so let's see. Let me see if I can see her message. Yeah, I see one group discussion right here. So she used the discussion. Uh, there you go. Perfect. Yep. So you already communicated with your group member. So um, if you want to, real quick, since this was so short, I will go to the uh, PowerPoint for this week's chapter. I don't know if you're still tracking with me here, but I'll make sure you can see my screen once I get there. Uh, so let's see. And I apologize. I've been sick, pretty sick the last few days here. Uh, so I think it's chapter 11. Uh, let's see. What are we covering this week? I get them confused. I teach three different, um, three different classes with three different textbooks on the same topic, all on business communication. So I forget which textbook covers what and which chapter, but so, yeah, so chapter 11 is actually on reports, business reports. So uh, it's probably not going to be as helpful as maybe, and I'll just, the reason, the reason I looked at that is I wanted to see, I don't know if you guys can see my screen. Can you guys see that PowerPoint 11? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, let's go back real quick to uh, next week. So that's 11. Um, PowerPoint 12, I believe, might be the proposals. So you might want to look ahead if you're going to start right away. I just assume the first week or two, you'll just connect with each other and uh, look at the assignment and figure out how you're going to approach it as far as who does what. Um, the nice thing about doing an assignment together is if you have people that you can work with well and rely on, you can each divide up a piece of the work. And uh, one person can do the research, one person can, you know, type it all out, uh, et cetera, however you guys want to divide it all up. Okay, there we go. Sorry, it's taking a while to load. Yeah, so reports, proposal, and presentation. So informal, oh, so chapter 12 is informal. Sorry, still reports in chapter 12. Uh, so let's go down one more week, see if chapter 13 is the proposal. Should be the formal, probably formal and informal proposals. And you don't have to cover every section. I'm really just looking for it to have, you know, I'm really looking for it to follow the AIDA format more than anything, which again is something to really grab the attention of your boss, something to build their interest about, you know, maybe laying out there all the positives and negatives of what you're experiencing now. And then, you know, anticipating their uh, 
their uh, resistance, you know, by maybe they're thinking this is going to be expensive, you know, so here's the breakdown of the cost. It's really not as expensive as you think. In fact, we'll save money and time, you know, and then driving home what you want them to do. But in that, of course, you're going to be building a strong case for, for it. So, yeah, so proposals, business plan, formal business reports. So you're really just dealing with chapter 13, the first few sections on a proposal, writing an informal proposal. So that's the section you want to kind of review and there is some different sections, introduction, background, problem and purpose, proposal plan, schedule, staffing, budget, authorization. You don't need necessarily to do the staffing section. Um, if this was a request for proposal and I was a company trying to solicit to your company to use a service, uh, proposing to you to use a service that we have to offer, I would probably include my staffing so that you get an idea of the quality of the worker that's going to be doing it. But in this case, it's an in internal proposal to my existing uh, boss. So in that case, they already know who the staffing is, so you wouldn't need to do that. Uh, but it is nice to have some kind of introduction, some kind of background to the problems, and then, of course, your proposal. But remember to follow the AIDA format. That's really what I'm looking for in this. And then a formal proposal gets into way more detail. You don't need to do any of that. But it goes through some of those sections in here. So you might want to work through that with your group. Um, so it's, again, Chapter 13. So that's a couple of weeks from now as far as what you'll be uh, when when you'll be looking at that in the class. But you might want to jump ahead if you start working on this together and, and take a look at that. But that, you know, the week that that's available, oh, Chapter 13, the week that you'll cover that in class, you're mostly just focusing on the, uh, you know, understanding the concepts by taking the quiz. So that's when you really want to look at all of the chapter and then be prepared to take your quiz number 15. And by the way, the final check and assignment is just personal questions. It has nothing to do with any of the chapters. So uh, that should be, and I usually leave that open for like two weeks at the end of the class. So, so anyway, you have chapter 11 this week, which is on reports. I think it was formal reports. Chapter four, uh, chapter 12 next week, which is on informal reports. Uh, which neither one of those relates to your assignment, but chapter 13 does. So you might, um, I just want to let you know that that way you can jump ahead and find whatever you need in that chapter to help you with your proposal. So, and I think it does explain the difference between a uh, solicited proposal and an unsolicited proposal. And unsolicited is just that you're, in your this case, your boss is not expecting this. It's just kind of coming out of the blue a little bit, which is why the AIDA format works really well because you're trying to catch their attention and say, hey, there's this, there's something that we could do much better. There's a way we could save money and time. And, you know, and that becomes a uh, a way to grasp their attention. If you remember, I'm sure your books covered this, but it did say when you're trying to do a persuasive message moving up the chain of command, you know, it always looks best when you can delineate it in dollars and cents you know how can we save money that's what your boss in time is that's what your boss is going to be most concerned with is how can we save money in time and that's what you're going to try and you know use in your proposal to convince them to make this switch so anyways that's pretty much it i covered everything that i feel like is relevant to the assignment do you guys have any questions any more questions um, yes. Do you offer any like extra credit work um, for this course? Um, I typically don't only because, you know, I give a lot of different ways to make points. And um, in most, if, as long as you've done everything, you know, even if you've missed stuff, I let you make it all up. The only thing I won't let you make up is the check-in assignments. And that's not enough to, you know, to... Uh, significantly hurt your grade so like for instance if you missed any of the homework assignments or any we don't have homework assignments any of the quizzes or any of the writing assignments you're welcome to make any of those up and, and you get full credit for them does that make sense yes thank you so like if you missed anything and your grade is low right now because you've missed something all you need to do is go back and do it and even on the writing assignments if i um if i gave you a low score and you want to redo it and resubmit it, you can get another, you know, chances are you'll get a higher grade on that assignment. So if I gave you like a 35 or something and you're like, I could have got 50, then look at my comments that I've given you in the document and then redo your document to reflect those suggestions and then re-upload it and I'll give you a higher score. So Awesome, thank you. Yeah. So that, I mean, that, that alone should be enough for you to move your grade up if it's not where you want it to be uh, without having to do extra credit. So, 
Um, in the in-person class for this class that I do, which is Biz 24, I do offer, uh, it's more of like class participation credit. So like if a student, if we do a special event or a special activity in the class and and, you know, I, I really need the students participation and I'll tell them if you do this, I'll give you extra credit, you know, and I do that in that class. But because I can't do that in the online environment, it's a little difficult to do that. So anyway, you can make it up with the other stuff I just mentioned. <clears throat> just make sure you always do your check in assignment. That's the key, because that's the only one I won't. I, I count that kind of like attendance, like class participation. So. If you if you don't participate within the week, then you can't go back. You know, we can't go back in time and re-participate in a class that's already passed. You know, so that's the way I look at those is your participation has to be during the week. And that's my way of knowing that you've participated that week by looking. And plus, it gets you in the book, which I know a lot of classes, uh, one of the biggest complaints you get from students is, you know, I have this book, but I don't really use it. You know, there's no reason for it. So I want to make sure you're using your book. And I think there's a lot of great information. So I direct my questions towards some of the key items that you really need to know and understand in the class. And that's, there's not a lot of them, but there's, they're pointed, they're, they're direct for a reason with what I'm looking for. And hopefully that, you know, gives you a good understanding of the main points that you need to know of that chapter. So, all right. Any other questions, Bobby, Georgina? No, I'm good. No, I'm good. All right. I'm going to end the recording and, uh,